Hey everyone, it's Jonathan, and welcome back to Wonderland Wednesday. This episode is the final part in our mini-series on Wonderland-ish Disney educational material. Sort of. We've got some more stuff coming that's debatable, but these were the ones that were very explicitly made for educational purposes. So today we're talking about Donald in Math Magic Land. I've wanted to talk about this one for a while. It is mildly Alice adjacent, and since I'm trying to get through all of the Alice in Wonderland material from Disney this year, I thought I'd throw this in as well. Of course, I had Jenna join me as both a Disney history and Alice expert, and I asked Mark as well, partly because he's also a big Disney history buff, but I also could have sworn he suggested we do Donald in Math Magic Land years ago and never had, but at this point, if he did suggest it, he'd forgotten. Either way, he was still down to talk about this strange little piece of Disney history. I thought this was from the Wonderful World of Disney TV show, but it says it got nominated for an Oscar. It was released theatrically in 1959, and then 1961, it premiered on Walt Disney's Wonderful World of Color. Yeah. Okay. I've always just, in my head, I've always thought of it as from the Wonderful World of mm -hmm. well, Color, but Disney. I guess that makes sense that it was theatrical, because there was a much higher production put into this than I would have expected from a show. Uh, I will say, at least the, I've only seen the first episode of World of Color, because it's so hard to watch World of Color, Disney. Intent. Yeah. I'm looking at you, Disney. Last time I talked about this, you probably did a st streaming service, but you never, you only put select episodes on there. Why don't you put the whole thing, Disney? But anyway, it's a very good episode. Uh, I like it a lot. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I really liked all of the... <laughs> Like, I'm not a huge math person, but I liked all the math puns. The thing that made me laugh the hardest, I think, was square roots. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> just, yeah, he no, said that, and I just burst out laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not super into it overall, but, like, I mean, at least, it, you know, it's half an hour. It has it has uh, more depth than the other two. <laughs> it's not my favorite. Mm -hmm. It's Okay. I enjoyed it. I don't think it would be one that I would go back to, but I thought it was more educational than the other ones that we've talked about. Like they actually taught concepts that you could remember and use in other ways. It felt like it was trying to convince me that magic is cool. That magic, sorry, math, math. Math, math, magic. <laughs> math, magic. <laughs> yeah, math is cool. Yes. And it's like, okay. All right. It it felt like it felt like somebody who really loves math trying to convince somebody who really hates math that my interests are cool too. <laughs> but you know that one point where you uh where Donald's like trying to figure out the billiards and like mm -hmm. completely failing at trying you know yeah. doing the angle thing. That's me with math. So <laughs> it, like yeah, I guess when you try to when you talk about that, it seems like it might be cool. But then when I try to do it, I'm like, nope. No, it's not. I can't do it. This brings me to the question that I, the main question I had after this, watching this was, I mean, I, I've seen this before when I was a, a kid, like maybe in first grade or something, but I haven't seen it since then. But my, my biggest question is like, what what is the age, the target age range for, for this um, short? Like, that what, is a what, good question. Because a lot of these mathematical, like I, I was one class away from getting a math minor, so I, I, I do like math a lot, but okay. I feel a lot of these um, topics taught in this, like, you know, it's not really like, you know, arithmetic or numbers or something that, you know, elementary school kids could maybe learn from or target it. So it's more abstract and geometric and... Uh, angles and then just like oh there's patterns in the world and stuff like that so i wasn't sure is this meant for like elementary school kids is this some middle school high school what 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 is the age range meant for it's weird because at the same time i feel like it doesn't really appeal to kids that much either yeah, exactly yeah like at one point they're talking about like billiards and stuff and i i can't think of any kids who would really be interested in that which is why i'm thinking like at least high school kids at, at the minimum is what this is age, is aimed for but then at the same time that it feels too young for high school kids right like, yeah as well it, it's just so it's just like um it's kind of weird mess for everyone but also no one that's a good way to put it <laughs> yeah and i i did also think that they're like uh, it was a little too broad yeah it's more like just trying to convince you guys math isn't like as useless as you might think it is mm -hmm. and i'm like okay i guess 
<laughs> All right. Which goes back to like, yeah, I feel if that was, that was the message they're trying to send, you could do this, you know, at a less broad perspective using numbers and arithmetic to get aimed at elementary school kids. You could get the same, the same message you're trying to teach. And it could be something that would appeal to them and also get them interested in mathematics or something like that. But uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a strange, the, the intent and the execution of this is two very different things. Yeah, I agree. Do you have any thoughts, Jonathan? Mostly just that, like you said, it feels like somebody trying to convince you that math is cool. Mm-hmm. And it's in some ways, I get what they're going for because, like, I'm not a math fan, but I'm not mm-hmm. bad at math. Like, in yeah. school, I hated being forced to do math, but I could always do it. Like, I never had any problem doing it. I just wanted to do art instead. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, in this classroom, I'm the flunker. Um, <laughs> I was. Uh, hey, you're the most knowledgeable one here, but you know. Oh, well, thank you. No, it's. it's I have the. I kind of have the thing with like you know how people. Oh my gosh, what's it called? When numbers like move on you. Dyscalculia. Yes, that's it. Dyscalculia. Mm-hmm. It's like dyslexia, but for numbers. Yes, and uh, I've always had this problem where like whenever I do numbers. I somehow, like math equations, I somehow always end up with the wrong number, like completely out of left field. Anyway, so I, I've always struggled with math. So this kind of short, uh, while it was entertaining, sometimes I was, you know what, I don't know if I want to use the word entertaining. Yeah, um, I think that's too much. That's too strong a word. <laughs> too, it's too strong. It was edutaining, um, is what I would call it, where it's just like, it wasn't completely boring but yes. it wasn't entertaining. So it was entertaining, but I also was like, I can't really engage with this on a deeper level. Besides relating so much to the, you know, Donald, and then the point where you look in his brain is like, oh no, he's relatable. <laughs> um, in terms of Alice, I really appreciate, like the very beginning part, I felt was very uh, told you would. Yes. Yes. They even had the the pencil bird. Yeah, the pencil bird was like, lifted straight out, and I liked how they went a step forward and gave him like a an, a ruler body too. Um, I forgot what those what the oh, things are yeah. called. I don't remember what those. Yeah, are. it had it had one of those. It's not a ruler. It's not a. It's like a triangle ruler. It, it yeah. It's yeah. This this. I was thinking about tractor, something. but that's more hemispheric. It's tra- tractor something. Oh well. <laughs> a triangle ruler is called a set square. <laughs> okay. See that that's confusing right there for some people. Yeah, that's confusing. Um, so I, I liked that because it kind of felt like, you know, Lewis Carroll was a mathematician and it kind of felt inspired by that a little bit. So I can't say that if it was on purpose, but it was like, I feel like if Lewis Carroll as a person saw this, he might have gotten a kick out of it, especially the square roots. I think he would have really liked that. But, uh, and then the part later with the looking glass land, that's basically uh, through the looking glass as Disney ever gets, like classic Disney. Yeah, I was kind of surprised at how much of that, like, I was like, this feels like if they'd ever made Through the Looking Glass, they could have done something like this. Yeah, and I enjoy Donald being uh, Alice. <laughs> He's was... the right one. He was the right one to put. <laughs> yeah. It wouldn't work with Mickey or Goofy. <laughs> it's interesting, though. Like, obviously, he's meant to be the Disney Alice. He's got the same dress and the same hairstyle, even though it's got a bit more of a curl on its end. But he's a brunette in this kind of odd. That's why it felt off. Because I, yeah. I only watched this one once because it was the longest one. I didn't have time to watch it again. But I was like, I, I was looking at him and I was like, this feels right but wrong at the same time. That's why. It was the hair. Yeah, the hair was weird. And other than that, I wrote, I like that they call him a lost Alice. I don't know. It just, uh, it kind of implies that they have this history of Alice's walking in and getting lost. I like that. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think it's supposed to be taken that way, but I, you know, I find my jollies where I can. <laughs> I also like the part where he goes very, it- very interesting. Like he doesn't really care. He's just what's he's just <laughs> done. Um, but I felt that it was very Alice. Like that's something she would have done. Like very interesting. You know, like especially especially in through the looking glass where she gets she's kind of done with everybody's tomfoolery. She's like, "Yes, read me another poem. Go ahead." You know, 
And that's really all the Alice connection I can really see in this. Um, though there was kind of a hall of doors towards the end. But anyway, you guys got any comments about those parts or the rest of the short? You know, the main thing that the short taught me, like with all the math stuff, like I said, I was not bad at math. So for most of this, I was like, I already know all this stuff. Mm. The thing that when I started like actually feeling like I learned something was like the billiards. It's like, yeah. oh, wow. This yeah, actually, I agree. Like, I've never understood billiards or pool. And this also taught me that billiards is not pool. <laughs> I thought they were the same game, but billiards apparently doesn't have pockets. So that was interesting. I think this also taught me that same. When I saw this the first time when I was like first grade, this also taught me, oh, billiards and pool are two different things. Well, it taught me that, and I'm in my late 30s now. So <laughs> <laughs> you learned it earlier than I did. I really thought billiards nice. was just another name for pool. So yeah, this actually is educational, I guess. You know what? <laughs> I, you know, I've seen this before, and I guess I must have learned that, but I always forget it. So have I ever really learned it? <laughs> There's the question. You know, in a month or so now, I'm still going to call Billy Earth Pool and Pool <laughs> Billy Earth. And vice versa. So, yeah. I mean, I've never really played either. I've tried playing Pool, but I never got it. I've only I... done Digital Pool. <laughs> nice. I didn't really realize that there was that much of a strategy. That's the most educational thing was that, like, people are calculating. Yeah, Billy's especially, like, what we saw with all the angles and that there, there is strategy and skill and math. I mean, you, you get that with pool too like people mm. use strategy of pool as well I, yeah, I don't know how they do it. it's a game of angles <laughs> yeah i think the billiards part was actually i'm gonna i'm just gonna call it it was the most interesting part in the short yeah no i agree yeah for me too yeah other than the alice stuff because i i did find that fun seeing the alice connections but then i did yeah. kind of get bored because i was like i already know about the <laughs> golden rectangle and the as an artist i don't care about the golden rectangle so <laughs> well th this was also the first thing that taught me the name of the f what we call the star shape is actually a pentagram which is also what i learned when i watched this for the first time when i was first grade yeah it's like pentagram there's a word you know uh, it's kind of a shape that has uh you know sort of association yeah um, full disclosure i watched this with my boyfriend earlier today mm. and uh when Donald gets the pentagram on his palm, he went. He said, "No, I'm a Satanist." <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I kind of thought similar things when I watched this because I was like, "Yeah, if my mom had seen this when I was growing up, she would have thought I was watching something evil." First, Donald's a Nazi, now he's a Satanist. <laughs> this was going on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean pentacles seem really cool, or pentagrams, whatever they are. They're cool. Mm -hmm. Though, uh, I think part of that segment, part of what made it weird was this whole secret <laughs> society jam session. Um, that was that was awesome. Yeah. I wrote, once they groove, they can rest. <laughs> like, Were they supposed to be ghosts or what? I didn't really know what was I going on. I think they were them. ghosts. Yeah, because they're like transparent and they're in ruins. So I was like, I think they're ghosts. And uh, then right after that, he gets the St. Judas uh, thing, signal, and it's like, oh, he's part of their club. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of does make you wonder if, like, the imagery of, if this is real, does the imagery of these kind of, like, witch cults and stuff come from them? Oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I should look that up. Like the pentagram and all that. Yeah. Like, you know, they weren't actually witches, but they felt like they needed to hide. They're secret mathematicians. Yeah. I wonder if some of, some of that kind of evolved out of it, because I'm on the Wikipedia page for Pythagoreanism, and it says that it was both a philosophic tradition as well as a religious practice. So I wonder yeah, if that... over time this wasn't something that maybe evolved and or was subject to superstition that people kind of twisted and made into something else. Could be. Mm. Yeah. History is interesting like that. Yeah. To be honest, I'm kind of surprised they even touched on it, considering, you know, America in the 50s and 60s was so Christian. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this stuff, like the Satanism stuff, that all happened more in the in the late 70s and 80s, because that all that yeah. turned into like the period 
people now call the satanic panic. So I don't mm-hmm. think that at the time that this was made, the pentagram and all that would have had the connotations that it picked up in the 80s. Yeah, I think, well, I'd like, I was thinking. It was way by um, communism at the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Prior to this period, uh, because I'm thinking more of of like the Haunted Mansion had a lot of like stuff that probably wouldn't have flown in the 70s, 80s. Mm -hmm. There was kind of this thing where this stuff was more acceptable because it was thought of as like kind of like fairy tale-ish. Like it was antiquated, like not actually witchcraft. And then the Charles Manson murders happened. And uh, even though that wasn't actually, you know, witchcraft. I think that was more ramblings of a madman. I wonder how many podcasts uh, about Donald and Meth Magic Land end up <laughs> into discussions about the Manson murders. Oh, how many podcasts have, are about Donald and Meth Magic Land? That would be my bush. That, that, that is, that's true. That's, that's the first question we can answer. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome, Jonathan. I suppose you could cut this off. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, this part I'm leaving in. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's. I do think it's interesting because I could imagine even nowadays, it did seem made a short like this. I can imagine they would not vent it, focus on the pentagram. No, they would because not. Because they, yeah, because they wouldn't want people to twist it. Yes, especially since stuff like Da Vinci Code and all that has been in American culture very recently. Yeah, even like Donald as a Nazi gets taken out of context. Mm-hmm. So it's. I don't think Disney would want to give them any ammo. No. Meanwhile, yeah. Donald and the Math Magic Land is over here, and the Christian moralists aren't seizing on to it. Uh, <laughs> there's so much material for them to mine in here. It's kind of surprising. Uh, at this one point, like you see Donald's head, and then it kind of like supposed to fade into his brain, I guess. And you see like the pentagram on top of a pentagram, and the pentagram. And the pentagram. I could totally see somebody taking that. And on purpose, twisting it into propaganda. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, it's an interesting time capsule. I shouldn't laugh because it probably could happen. Yeah. Again, my, my boyfriend at one point, I wrote this down because he made me laugh. He's like, witchcraft to burn him. Because of the it brought up earlier. So, <laughs> Math is magic. I got it. <laughs> it was there in the title the whole time. <laughs> they were telling us in the title. It's all a sp- secret conspiracy. <laughs> but yeah, this is, uh, I think that's all I really have to say about it. To, uh, do you guys have anything else? Well, speaking of Hunter Mansion, when you mentioned that earlier, yeah. Paul Fries is the voice of the Spirit oh, yeah. Adventure or whatever it's called. Yeah. Uh, I thought he did a really great job. I actually thought it was some educational narrator they got to be the narrator, but no, it was Paul Fries. I was like, wow, this guy is really <laughs> Disney talented. Disney loved Paul Fries at this time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was their boy. He was in everything. For some reason, I had read that he was in this, and I just assumed that he was going to be in it as Ludwig von Drake. And then when I got to the end, I was like, Ludwig von Drake was not in this. And then I looked it up. Oh, yeah. he was the narrator? Yeah. <laughs> but also, June Foray was the queen. And Daz Butler was the king. Yeah. What other Alice thing did Daz Butler do? Has he done Alice things? Did he do that Flintstone one we watched? Not Flintstone. Um, yeah, the Hanna-Barbera one. Was he in that? I think he might have been. Oh. I feel like we talked about him in... In a different episode. Uh, yeah, he was the King of Hearts in, in that one. Okay. As well as the March Hare and the Sportscaster. So he's actually played a, a king from Alice in Wonderland twice, which is uh, more than I thought is possible, but here we go. <laughs> a king from Alice in Wonderland and a king from Through the Looking Glass. <laughs> yes. He gets around. <laughs> Always royal, though. Always a royal. Oh, I guess the only other thing I would say is like I could I, I feel this concept would be good like if Disney made like a, a series based on this, like maybe a dis on Disney Plus or something, a series of maybe ten minute shorts where they eat where Donald learns some mathematical concept in each of the episodes. I think that would could actually work and it, tailored correctly with the proper you know educators involved could, you know, be very useful in teaching kids mathematics and arithmetic. I think that would be a cool little spin off thing they could do. I definitely think it would be better at making their points than this one does to yeah. be segmented. Because this one kind of, in a way, it's kind of overwhelming. Yeah, it had it, it had so much, and yet it 
took too long to say some of it. Like, I really felt like it meandered so much in certain areas, even the parts that were the most interesting, like the billiards being the thing that taught me the most out of this, since I already mm -hmm. knew so much other stuff. It took forever. Like, it wasn't that long, but it took forever. Josh, I thought the worst part was the nature stuff, because I, I don't know. I guess they're technically not wrong, but it was so boring. That was the most boring to me, but it was partly because it was like, I already know all this stuff. And also it's just kind of quiet and they're just putting like stock footage with math shapes over it. And it, they could have done it more interestingly. Yeah. And the very last thing the narrator says, and this is a quote from, I forget who it was. Was it Rene Descartes somewhere? But he mentions Galileo. Like math being Galileo, the soul of God. Mathematics is the alphabet with which God has written the universe. Yes. So I was thinking, like, I don't think Disney has mentioned God in anything they've done in the past, I don't know how many years. So I'm trying to think this might have been the last thing chronologically I could remember where they actually mentioned Disney mentioned God. I don't think that's something they would probably do nowadays. Well, the, probably not chronologically, because like in mm. Rescuers, Penny was praying. Rescuers, yes, I forgot about that. I feel like there was something else too, but I can't think of it right now. Yeah, I'm like, sure they mentioned it, um, but I can't remember it in the last few years. Yeah, and definitely not in the recent memory. Yeah, I'm okay with that, but, um, you know, that's just me. I'm okay with, not, it, with it not being referenced. I thought it was kind of weird. But um, at the same time, I think, because Lewis Carroll is the mathematician, so I tried really, really hard to look <laughs> into his math stuff. And it oh, was... Lewis Carroll? Yeah, yeah, Lewis Carroll. He wrote books about logic and math as well. Mm -hmm. And I I tried. Uh, by God, I tried. <laughs> he has some funny quips in between, so there's that. But anyway, uh, he kind of said it himself at some point that, like, for him math proves that there's a divine creator mm -hmm. because there's all these kind of like coincidences and we're not coincidences like these things all add up essentially yeah correct yeah so i think there's kind of a traditional mindset and to be honest i think it's also partially because probably way way back in the day you know they probably they probably were like witchcraft <laughs> and they're like no no it's proof of a divine creator you know like so i'm like not surprised by the ending quote I don't think it's necessary, but there is kind of a traditionalist approach to it, I suppose. That makes sense. I, th I feel like it ties into the other like ancient stuff they were talking about. Like, not that Galileo is the same as Pythagoras, but yeah, I mean, the ancient philosophers talking about math, I think that's probably the tie in. I think it makes sense from that perspective. I also had that the snowflake and Donald Duck kaleidoscope animation was pretty good. Oh, that reminds me. It reminded me of Three Caballeros, the trippy imagery. Oh, yeah. But also the part with the golden rectangle with him, like, looking at the perfect woman. I was like, okay, we're oh, back yeah. to Three Caballeros, Donald. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I thought that. Too. Perfect Donald. That, that's basically him. Classic Donald. Yeah. Perfect Donald, he's got to try. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked about Satanism, cults. Donald being creepy and perverted. <laughs> Charles Manson. Donald kind of has a pin up of Daisy in his brain. Oh, that's true. I forgot to mention that. I saw that too. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, at least he's faithful, I suppose, Sorry. while not being faithful in his actions. But yeah. <laughs> his mind is only off for her. <laughs> yeah. Human woman in his mind. There you go. Yeah, that's true. Human women are on the outside. The duck women is on the inside. <laughs> so whatever that's worth. <laughs> he knows it won't, it won't ever work with the human. <laughs> he has realistic standards in the end, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> he has internal values. When it comes to time to settle down, it's Daisy. <laughs> yeah. You know, hey, hey, he's Donald is a complex character. <laughs> He's never been famous for being logical and moral. Let's just say that. Uh, that's probably true. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we, we, we touched a lot of, on this episode. Um, you ran the gamut. Yeah. <laughs> Who knew that math could be so controversial? <laughs> there it is, kids. Don't watch this. It's too controversial. <laughs> it's too controversial, kids. This is, uh, we're, you know what? I'm going to say at least PG-13.
if for no other reason than kids under 13 are not going to care about this at all. <laughs> it's a really big loss. <laughs> so do we believe this deserved the Oscar nomination for Best Documentary? Pro- I, I don't know. I, I, I'm just going to say it was probably a weak year for winning then. <laughs> I don't think it won, right? I think it just got nominated. Okay. Well, yeah, it was a pretty weak year then that they even nominated it. <laughs> to be honest, I don't think it does it very well. Like, it gives broad concepts, and maybe you could say it gives it does the broad overview well. I don't know how I would agree with that. Maybe I don't have, like, the knowledge to be able to agree whether it does that well or not. It lost to a short film called Glass, which was about the glass industry in the Netherlands. Well, that sounds random, but uh, I'm sure it was a better documentary. I could believe it. I'm sure the makers of Glass could boast about that. We beat out a Disney film, a documentary Oscar. What, is, what even is the definition of a documentary? Because, like, I don't know. This doesn't feel like it would fit it. That is true, I guess. Anything that's teaching what something is a documentary. According to the Wikipedia page, the rules and eligibility for Best Documentary Short is a short subject documentary is defined as a non-fiction motion picture dealing creatively with cultural, artistic, historical, social, scientific, economic, or other objects. Okay, well, I guess it technically is a documentary. I learn something new every day. There we go. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought of it that way, but with that definition, yes, that Mm -hmm. would qualify. With that definition, we could qualify. (laughs) (laughs) I suppose. (laughs) This is a documentary about Alice and Jason uh, media that Disney has been involved in. Thank you, everyone. Please nominate us. There we go. Let's get Jonathan's every version ever on the ballot somewhere. Heck yeah. Uh, That's all I have to say. (laughs) We did the Manson murders already. Where else is there to go? (laughs) <laughs> well, on that note, I think that's probably a good place as any to call it a night. <laughs> that's the last time you listened to that Jonathan North podcast. <laughs> so controversial. All he talks about is murder and cults and <laughs> pentagrams. <What is> this? <laughs> we we started talking about Alice in Wonderland and Donald Duck and somehow ended up on Charles Manson. Manson. <laughs> Casual Nazi mention. I'm never listening to this guy again. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, <laughs> until the next episode, do you guys want to <laughs> let people know where to find you if they want more from you, Jenna? If I'm not canceled, um, I'm Phantom Wise <laughs> on YouTube and also love Gift of a Fairy Tale on YouTube as well. And Mark? Uh, you can find my blogs at the Animation Accommodation and theanimationaccommodation.com and my live action Disney project at my live action Disney project.com. Okay. Well, I'm sure we'll be back for something else in the future, but probably not the Manson murders. <laughs> <laughs> Alice Wonder beats the Manson murders. You never know. Jonathan starts a two crime series. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Well, see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Wonderland Wednesday. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe and follow my co-hosts as well. My link tree and all of our links will be in the description below. If you want more of my content, all my podcasts are available on YouTube as well as most podcast platforms. If you enjoyed this show, check out one of the other podcasts or check out my Patreon for bonus and extended episodes you won't find anywhere else. We'll be back soon with another brand new episode, so thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.